David Beckham is poised to be crowned the face of the 2022 Qatar World Cup next month, earning a staggering $227 million. The former Manchester United superstar has agreed to a 10-year contract to serve as Qatar's ambassador, and the deal is likely to generate controversy given the country's human rights record and views against the citizens and members of the LGBTQ community. Let's get into it. David Beckham signed a $227 million 10-year contract last year to become Qatar's ambassador and the tournament's face. The event, which will be held from November 21st to December 18th, will make it the first FIFA World Cup to be held in Asia since South Korea and Japan co-hosted in 2002, and the English football legend agreed to a multi-million dollar deal to become an ambassador for Qatar ahead of the year's World Cup. But there's a lot of controversy surrounding this deal. The idea to award Qatar the hosting rights of the 2022 World Cup was met with criticism, which has raised a number of questions and disputes about both Qatar's eligibility as a receiving country and the fairness of the FIFA bidding process. Aside from that, FIFA, the world governing body of football on the other side, is currently under fire for proposing to hold a World Cup competition every two years rather than every four years. But let's talk about Qatar's eligibility first. A number of media sources, athletic experts and human rights organizations criticized the event, citing issues such as Qatar's lack of footballer history, the climate condition, the high estimated cost, and Qatar's bad record on human rights. Several allegations of bribery have been leveled against the Qatar bid committee and FIFA members and officials which made FIFA members, notably Theo Zanzviger and ex-president Seb Blatter, state that awarding the tournament to Qatar was a mistake. Also, Lisa Clavenus, who happened to be the head of the Norwegian Football Federation, criticized FIFA for awarding the World Cup to Qatar at the March 2022 FIFA conference in Doha, citing the myriad concerns surrounding the tournament. She contended that the decision to award the tournament to Qatar was unacceptable citing factors like the abuse of migrant workers involved in stadium construction and worries in the LGBTQ community about traveling to Qatar for the finals in November. However, the Qatar 2022 Secretary General Hassan Al-Fawadi criticized her views for neglecting the country's recent labor reforms. Amnesty International also accused FIFA in May 2022 of turning a blind eye while thousands of migrants worked in conditions that resembled forced labor, stating that FIFA should have required labor protections as a condition of hosting. There have been so many records of Qatar treating their residents so badly, like the one in August 2022 when Qatari officials arrested and deported over 60 migrant employees who had protested against their employer, Al Bandari International Group, a large construction and hotel enterprise, for failing to pay their wages. Wait, uh, when did protesting become a crime? Some of the protesters, who'd not been paid for seven months, came from Nepal, Bangladesh, India, Egypt, and the Philippines. But Qatar's labor ministry said they will take additional measures against the company which was already being investigated for failing to pay wages, but nothing was done. Also, a poll was carried out in September 2022, and it resulted that almost 17,000 football fans from 15 countries are against FIFA for supporting Qatar despite the human rights breaches. FIFA responded with a statement lauding Qatar's migrant worker policies. FIFA will continue its efforts to enable remediation for workers who may have been adversely impacted concerning FIFA World Cup-related work following its human rights policy and responsibilities under relevant international standards. According to the US Department of State, the study on human rights violations in Qatar shows there are considerable limits on free expression, reports of forced labor, and deep gender discrimination in the country. And to back this up, Rothna Begum, senior women's rights researcher at advocacy group Human Rights Watch, also expressed her disappointment. In her words, celebrities who are paid to promote the Qatari state and who believe themselves to be pro-women and pro-rights women should take advantage of the opportunity and access to individuals in positions of power to inquire about what is going on. Also, following the release of Denmark's toned-down uniforms for the tournament on September 28, 2022, one of the kits released was recorded to contain a black alternate jersey that signifies the hue of sadness, referring to a dispute between Hummel and World Cup organizers in Qatar, in which Hummel alleged that thousands of migrant laborers were killed during the venue construction. How can a country with such a record still host the World Cup? It's so wrong, because when the human right of a country is being tampered with, then it's against what FIFA stands for. We can go on and on. But how does all of this concern David Beckham? The former England captain is being criticized by human rights activists, 
for accepting a $227 million deal with Qatar to serve as an ambassador for the 2022 World Cup. Beckham is a man of value, and you'll agree he's not the type to take such a deal because of his reputation. The forthcoming soccer tournament has heightened concerns about Qatar's human rights record, and veteran activist Peter Taschel said Beckham's Qatar deal is very depressing and disappointing. Tatchell said he has made a huge mistake. I hope you'll think again. This doesn't square with his professional support for women's and LGBT plus rights. Aside from the Qatar alleged corruption and human rights record, Beckham, on the other hand, is also known as a gay icon, and he's been proud of it over the years since he openly sought his gay fan, claiming he enjoyed being a gay icon and was delighted for his wife to publicize it. The international sensation on the side embraces his elevated status in the LGBTQ community and openly courts gay fans, but now, becoming the whitewashed face of one of the most notorious anti-gay countries in the world is the opposite of this belief. Homosexuality is outlawed in Qatar and Beckham already has a relationship with Qatar. He is anticipated to promote tourism and celebrate the country's cultural history. But how does he intend to succeed with this conflicting stance? In Qatar, homosexual actions between consenting men are punishable by up to five years in prison. As it is, he's already spent time in Qatar, flying into Doha to spend seven days visiting dignitaries and touring stadiums ahead of the event in just over a year. And according to reports, Beckham has been assured that supporters attending the extravaganza in December would be permitted to wave rainbow flags in stadiums and be kept safe throughout the event. As it is, David Beckham will earn $227 million as a Qatar ambassador over the next 10 years, irrespective of all controversies. David believes in Qatar's dedication to the improvement of soccer and that the World Cup, the Arab world's first, can impact tremendous positive change. According to a source, he strongly believes in the power of football to bridge differences but, crucially, has seen the progress on issues that matter. By signing David, the hope is more Westerners will be encouraged to see its beautiful beaches, vast expanses of dunes and incredible skyscrapers. A former LA Galaxy midfielder spokesperson also explained, David has always talked about the power of football as a force for good on many levels. As we reach the one year to go point, he will join the wider football community that's coming together for the 2022 World Cup and he's looking forward to what he thinks will be a great tournament. Beckham believes he could help Qatar turn the world of soccer around. In case you don't know, he's a right winger known for his passing range, crossing ability and bending free kicks. He has been acclaimed as one of the finest and most identifiable midfielders of his era, as well as one of the best set-piece players of all time. Beckham's professional soccer career began in 1992 when he made his first team debut for Manchester United at the age of 17. He won the Premier League six times with United, the FA Cup twice and the UEFA Champions League in 1999. He then spent four seasons with Real Madrid, winning the La Liga title in his last season. Beckham signed a five-year contract with Major League Soccer Club LA Galaxy in July 2007. During his time with the Galaxy, he had two loan spells in Italy with AC Milan in 2009 and 2010. And in case you don't know, he was the first British player to appear in 100 UEFA Champions League matches. However, he announced his retirement in May 2013, following a 20-year career in which he won 19 major awards. David Beckham believes football has progressed in terms of homophobia and racism since his prime in the 1990s, as he stated in an interview with The Evening Standard. I played for 22 years. I saw a lot of racism and homophobia, and I do think it has changed. Beckham expressed his thoughts on Blackpool player Jake Daniels coming out as gay. The 17-year-old is the first active English male professional to come out as gay since Justin Fasnauer 32 years ago, and his openness has triggered a flood of headlines and admiration. Beckham said, It's a shame that when someone does come out, it's such a strange thing. It shouldn't be. At the end of the day, there will be a huge amount of gay people in sports, and why should they be any different from anyone else? David Beckham's comments come after he signed the reported $227 million deal to become the face of Qatar, ahead of it hosting the 2022 World Cup. Despite Qatar's strident anti-LGBTQ plus stance and a history of human rights violations, Beckham's decision to promote a homophobic and sexist regime like Qatar comes as a big shock. And yeah, a lot of people believe David Beckham accepted the post for economic benefits and not values. Thanks for watching.